everybody, my name is Chase Pipes and you're watching Chasing History, brought to you by American Digger Magazine and the Smoky Mountain Relic Room. And we're back out in Montana with Eamon Yeager hunting the Two Medicine Formation. Absolutely. We've done a bunch of videos on the Two Med. We've done one short one on the Cory, and that was years ago when you were first starting to Cory out yeah. bones from this formation. Yeah, absolutely. Now your Cory has gotten tremendous <laughs> it's nuts yeah. but it's an entirely different kind of digging in the two medicine than what we've shown on previous episodes so yeah. what are we yeah. facing so in this quarry we're facing extremely hard rock um, this is a really hard sandstone layer and we're chasing the energet energetic flood event layers so this is a lot different than digging in like the hell creek or judith river where it's a soft clay or a softer sandstone this okay. is really hard rock quarrying okay so we're taking jackhammers crack or jackhammers crack hammers big pry bars and we're taking out big sections of rock to look for the bones themselves so the uh lance or the hell creek they're in softer clays generally yes okay yep. and here we've got sand yes yeah so yep. those are two entirely different environments that these bones fossiled in are these yep. is this a ancient seaway or a river so in or... this case we're a couple hundred miles inland from okay. the western interior waterway and whatnot there so this is more swampy areas that eventually had a big flood event that came through and that's what we're chasing is this massive flood event for this isolated area. And so, and then the water came through, took all these dinosaurs with them, stacked them in like log jams, buried them in a sediment, and over millions of years, they've just went under pressure of all this sandstone, and it's some of the best preservation I've ever seen. Wow. Yeah. So it's locked in sandstone, and we're standing in the middle of an ancient river, exactly. basically? Yep, exactly. That's so cool. Yeah. We're standing in a dinosaur, dinosaur river. <laughs> that's awesome. So what's the difficulties in getting this stuff out? Well, mostly the hard rock itself, um, and then also the preparation of the bones. But when we're getting out of the rock, you really want to chase these energetic layers that are down here at the bottom. Right, okay, right hold on. Here. Wait, in, all right, energetic layer. Yep. What do you mean by energetic? So the energetic layers are where you can see water came through and it was moving around a bunch of pebbles and different rocks. Okay. So if you're going through the sandstone and it's just a nice, you know, placid sandstone with no rocks or anything in it, that's going to be a slow moving water like a swamp where know? the sand can settle as it will exactly. right and build up over time exactly if you start seeing a lot of pebbles and stuff in there that shows a lot of energy of a lot of water moving through okay so you've got this high volume of water that's coming through that's carrying rocks pebbles yep. plant material and a bunch of bones exactly yeah okay yeah. so that's yeah. why you find stuff in the pebbly layer yep. and not a lot of stuff in the sandy layer yeah no, you you find some stuff in the sandy layer or in the, the softer sandstone layer but not too much yeah. honestly the the real event is down where you find that pebble and the real energetic rock itself that's so cool that we can see a flood from millions and millions of years ago this climatic event that captured not only you know the rocks and pebbles but that were ta taking dinosaurs with them that's that's epic dude oh it's amazing you know it's it is really cool to not only see the animals that were alive 74 million years ago, but to be able to chase an ancient flood system. Yeah, you know, that's really neat. You can see the water flow. You can tell where it peaks and where it dips. Yeah. You know, so we're standing in an ancient brackish swamp bed that had a huge event. Something really bad happened here, and it, and it wiped out these dinosaurs for probably a good 25, 30 miles. We can chase this later. Yeah. That's that's cool. But you know, you're not finding a whole lot of whole animals. No, not out so here. So you're huh? finding you know vertebrae here and a limb section there. Yeah. Yep. Lots of teeth. What yeah. what's going on? With that. So there's so much water going through that it actually eviscerated these dinosaurs limb from limb. So, oh, whoa, hold on. What? Yep. So if, if you, if <laughs> that's you're... cool. So, so the the water was so powerful in this yep. event with all the rocks and boulders and everything was so powerful. It literally ripped, ripped these, these dinosaurs apart. apart yep. Yep, which is why they're not. You're not finding whole animals. Exactly. So. Dude, that's so cool! It, it's 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 an ungodly force that came through here and wiped out these animals in this isolated area. Wow! So it, it's it's really amazing to see. And uh, but because of that, we don't find articulation. We won't find a whole leg articulated. We won't find a tail. You know, we find pieces. You know, you can kind of tell the directional flow of the water based on you know if you find a vertebrae from a tyrannosaur. Well, I'm going to go this way with the flow of what was the water because maybe there's more vertebrae going this way. And it's actually worked out a few times. So because of that, you can tell the flow which direction it was headed. Yep, absolutely. That's really cool. Yeah. That yeah. is really cool. It's, it really helps once you get an understanding so you know where you want to dig, 
you know, see, because this is such hard rock. Yeah. It, it can be a little disheartening to spend a whole lot of time in an area that you're not going to find a lot. Um, so you really want to try to focus on the spots that are going to be pretty hot. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Now there's a lot of teeth in here too. I mean, is was the force that powerful? It was just knocking dinosaurs' teeth out? That or could be part of it. Reasons. It can literally rip them out of the jaws. Yeah. Um, like we, for instance, we found a transfer jaw last year that had no teeth in it whatsoever. Um, wow. All of the teeth had come out through the water force and whatnot, and we found the teeth scattered around about 25 feet or so away, no, um, or all the way up to about 25 feet yeah. or so away. Um, so then there's a lot of other teeth in here from animals that would naturally shed their teeth. Um, right, because yeah. dinosaurs like sharks shed their one teeth. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So we find a lot of shed teeth as well. Um, it's pretty hard to decipher when you just find one lone tooth, whether it's a shed tooth or whether it's from a jaw that was taken out and eviscerated. But either way, every time we find a big tooth, we want to take a note of where it is and try to chase that direction because it could be a source that it's coming from. Right. So, that's yeah. epic. That's yeah. epic. Anything else you want to get into while we're here? Um, you want to get oh man, to... there's, there's going to be a lot of stuff we're going to do while we're here. Um, we're going to get into you know how we remove the bone and how we take the pressure off of the rock itself that's hosting the bone. Yeah, because that's something, that's a whole different animal that you've got to deal with is because there's literally a mountain behind yes. or a hillside yeah, behind us. Hundreds of thousands of pounds of pressure that have been sitting on these bones for 74 million years. Years, and we're trying to delicately pull those out of there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, if there's nothing else we want to talk about, then let's get to digging. Let's do it. One of the things that we wanted to explain to you guys is, is just how difficult that it gets to take some of these bones out. It's 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 an important aspect to digging fossils, you know. And when you're doing mining in the Tumad, especially in this kind of rock, I mean, it's it's extremely difficult. So we've got a bone here. What, dude? This is crazy difficult. Like, how how would you go about getting this bone out? So our quarry is a little bit different than you know the standard Hellcrit quarry or Judith River quarry where it's all soft clay. This is all hard rock. So the hard rock actually is kind of like a really ancient puzzle. And it's kind of funny because, you know, this rock is wedged in by this rock, this rock is wedged in by this rock. So you have to move all the rocks around it, and to get to the rocks around it, you might even have to move the rocks around them. So, wait a minute. So you're saying this rock is wedged in with this rock is wedged in with this rock. Yep. Is that because of cracks and fissures in the rock, or is, are you being literal? I'm being kind of literal. You can see the layering system here. This okay. all adds weight and compression onto the boat, onto the rock itself, or the okay. host matrix is what we call it. Okay. So your goal is to try to take this whole host matrix out in one big section get that home to the lab and then take it out. It's a little bit too dangerous for us just to remove it right away in the field without damaging the bone. Um, so you literally have to take all this pressure off of this rock to get it to pop out nice and clean without just splitting every which way direction. Right, so. I got you. Because you're not going, you're, you're not, you know, like reaching in and just grabbing it and pulling out. You've got to take all the overburden off, hence this giant wall behind Exactly, us. yeah. <laughs> just to get down to this one yep. fossil. Yep. So... Yep. Now, yeah. so, now, sometimes, you know, you can quote-unquote pothole yourself in certain areas where you find bones in, like, soft clays. Um, however, in this hard rock, you know, just simply potholing, you're not going to get anywhere. More than likely, you're going to destroy everything. So wow. you have to be kind of methodic. So if you see a bone down here, you know, hopefully we can get this out today. But there's an extreme possibility we start working on it and say, hey, this is all wedged in. we got to get all of this wow. before we can even touch this. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Are you looking, so when you go to pop this out, are you looking for another crack behind it where ideally, it'll come up in a block? Ideally, yes. Now, sometimes the cracks in this rock, this lower layer is a little bit different. We get smaller sections out of this, about usually 12 inches by 12 inches, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, but sometimes the rock itself will be three feet by three feet. Mm -hmm. And that crack will run all the way back and you just keep going back and you never see a natural crack. So if we get far enough behind the bone, there is the possibility we can take the jackhammer way behind the bone, like way away from it, and make our own crack. And that way we can excavate it that uh, excavate it out safely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And this is just now this is a type of fossil digging or mining, I guess you could say, in the two medicine that not a lot of people are doing, if anybody. Not at all. Um, you know, this is very tough. It, yeah. It's incredibly hard work. You have to move thousands of pounds of rock just to get to the bones itself. And uh, a lot of that's done by hand. Yeah. Um, so not a lot of people are really into this style of digging because there's not a lot of instant results. But the reason that we like it is I would argue that this is some of the best bone quality in the world since it's been preserved in this rock. So yeah, it is 10 times harder to get to. Um, however, the 
the result of it, once you finally get out of the rock, you can see, you know, you could juggle with these bones and yeah. they'll be fine. I mean, they, they are so dense and so well yeah. preserved and put together that it's just out of this world. Yeah. Well, it's like we've shown you on some of our other episodes, bones that are on the surface, how they get, roots get down to them, the bone, freeze thaw breaks the bone apart. You know, it's really the truth. Bones are in jeopardy when they get to the surface, but when they're deep inside this mountain, like we're digging into today, they're as solid, if not hard, well, they are harder than when they, you know, were first, I guess, when the dinosaur first died. Yeah, when they're first buried, yeah. yeah. Yep. You know, something we, we discussed and something you guys should look forward to is is we're going to sit down and do a podcast on the difficulty of, of getting such bones out and all that entails. So look for that on our podcast, Chasing History Radio. Until then, let's let you start get to work on popping this bone awesome. out. Awesome, let's get her out. That's a tooth. Right there. Oh, is that a clean break or is that all of it? Hey! Looks like all of it. So this is where it gets difficult because I'm prying pretty close to the bone. If I get this rock off from back here, I would, but I don't know how far the bone goes this way. We know it's right there for sure. But... Show us where the bone's at real quick. So we know. Here, yep. All the way over here. Okay. See the edge of the vertebrae, the process. So now this guy's fairly loose. So I'm just trying to be oh so delicate. It's that top rock is going with it, yeah. the whole bone. Yeah. So now what I can do is since he's lifted, take this. Oh, careful. Hey, yeah. Oh, we got to glue that real quick. Good catch. And I'm gluing in the cracks, trying not to get the skin. That is so important to glue in the cracks itself and try not to get the glue on the bone or to soak the host matrix with the bone. Otherwise, if you glue this bone to the rock, you know, you just added an extra layer of stress to get it out of there. Actually, I'm gonna use the small chisel and the small hammer. So you can see how this rock is being blocked by this rock, but this rock is being blocked by this rock, so you have to remove this rock to remove this rock to get to the bone. So <laughs> it's kind of an ancient 74 million year old puzzle that you have to really slowly take and, apart. And that's all just because of pressure. Yes, that's right. all that's all just the pressure of the rock holding against each other. Okay. And if you just start pulling things out, it's going to tear up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you yeah. just start yanking rocks out, mm -hmm. you can take bone with it. This can all fall apart. There might be another bone underneath of here somewhere, too. You have to be very systematic. Okay. And see how that one is starting to move. All of them. Yeah. So this one's starting to move, which means we got to get rid of it. So every time another rock moves that's in the way, you've got to get it out first. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So you might be all the way over here by the time you're trying to get this time. Right. <laughs> there we go. It's loose. It finally went. And just as you lifted it up, it relieved the pressure. Yep, exactly. Yep. Boom. Got that guy out. Oh, look at that. That is a good looking bone. Yeah, that's awesome. But still, it's entirely encased in that rock. Yeah. So how do you get it out from the rock after that? Just well, bring it home to the lab. We take the air scribe tools to it. Um, you have to use the air scribe tools to get all the rock off of the bone itself. Um, then you have to go through with, you know, different putties and clays to help crack fill it. You know, these cracks that are gonna form from excavation, mm -hmm. you know, that stuff needs to be filled back in to make the bone look nice. So. It's quite a bit of work. Uh, the air scribing is what takes the longest. I mean, there could be anywhere between 
five and 15 hours that have to go into this one single vertebrae to get it out of the rock safely. So, but the species is just so odd and the bone preservation is so magnificent that it's all worth it. Oh, you know, that guy's out. All right, so we got this pressure rock out yep. Yep. and we had a crack forming in behind us. Is that good news? Actually, in this case, yes, it is. Okay. Now, if it's a big, long limb, then that means that the limb is naturally broken into sections and still being held in in case by the rock. Okay. So that means we have to take it really del del delicately bleh, in, se in sections. Um, in this case, we're actually really lucky. Instead of having to remove all of this back rock just to get to this guy, we have a natural crack back here that we can now exploit and we can just try to pop the rock out as safely as we can. And that's because we're familiar with the bone. We know it's a vertebrae. We know vertebrae are only so big yep. and yep. that it's not extending beyond that crack. Exactly. So once you learn the basic taxonomy and you see a section of the bone, you can get an idea of what direction it's going to go. And you can kind of, I guess you could say, make the best laid plans to get out of the ground yeah. safely. And you want to try to keep it in one single host rock. That is the most ideal situation. It transports the safest. That means you're doing the least amount of damage to it possible. And it makes it a little bit easier to prep when you don't have pieces you have to put back together. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll let you get to popping. All right. So instead of exploiting the back crack first, we're going to try to pop up. Anytime you have to drag this rock out, you risk scratching the surface of the bone underneath and you can do a lot of damage to it that way. So, oh, this is gonna pop nicely. All right, let's get a little wedge underneath of there. Good job, teamwork. Oh, okay, I got it. Ah, oh, finger. Oh, sorry. Okay, you're good. <laughs> there we go, we got her. All right, I'm gonna the bone, I can't see. Ah, oh, there we go. So now the whole thing's out. And the whole bone is encased the right there. Encased. Yep. That's awesome. That is really cool. But like you were saying, this is a ridiculous amount of work to get that bone out. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's it's tough. There's gonna be hours of preparation work from here. So this is the very beginning of this bone's journey essentially and being brought back to life. You know, of course, discovering it, getting it out of the ground is a really big part, but the preparation is what is the most work entailing and the most time entailing and just the most difficult, so. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So what part of the bone is that? So this is called the transverse process. That's the side process that comes off the vertebrae. Mm -hmm. There would have been another one on this side that looks like it's missing, mm -hmm. but that is a good sign. This is a big, big vert. And it's really well intact with Very all so. of the parts and pieces. It's yep. not just the center part of a vert, but it's got the processes yep. as well. It's gonna be great. Nice. Hi, I'm Isaac Pipes and I'm with Eamon right now. And uh, I just found a tooth uh, that is worn down the reason it's worn down is because it was still in the jaw as it was gnawing on bones and meat. So over time it started to wore down. And uh, there's a bunch of cracks around it. And tell me, how do I get this bone out? <laughs> well, it's quite a process to get it out. Now, we're not gonna be able to take the tooth out completely out of the rock. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to leave it in some of the rock to take it home to keep it safe. Mm -hmm. um, doing field prep, which that's trying to take the tooth out of the rock, that's really not suggested. You wanna be in a more controlled environment like at your house, you know, or in a prep lab. Okay. Um, so in this case, we'll start chiseling underneath of it. You can see some natural breaks in the rock underneath and off behind. Mm -hmm. We'll start underneath and see if we can pop this up. Now, I think that we're only seeing about two thirds of the tooth here. I think this is actually gonna be about another inch longer. Um, so we'll find out once we pop it out of the rock here, or once we pop this rock up here. And so, and you're absolutely right about the tooth, the tip being worn down. You can see it's kind of rounded. It's not to a sharp point like you would imagine a Tyrannosaur tooth to be. Mm -hmm. um, so one of two things could have happened is either worn down from the Tyrannosaur's life. Um, Tyrannosaurs were constantly shedding teeth and regrowing teeth. So that means it'd be kind of an older one in his jaw if the tip is worn down like that yeah. and it was going to be shed out anyway. So this okay. could be a Tyrannosaur shed tooth. Okay. Or it was naturally tumbled in the water and the tip wore down that way. But since the enamel is still on the tooth, it wouldn't make sense 
for just the tip to wear down and not the enamel. Okay. So, so this is a good find. You have a really good, this is the fossil of the day. You get to stay first tonight. So. <laughs> Thank you. How, how uh, hard is it to find teeth like this in this kind of You know, you have to be very slow. You have to be very methodic, um, but you can find them. You know, we mm. usually find a few a year that are, you know, in this good of condition and this nice. Um, but you really have to pile through every little piece of rock, break everything down, look at every cross section. You got to be very thorough. Okay. So, and you did a very good job. You took it nice and slow. You worked down systematically on the table here, and you got your score. So good job. <laughs> Thank stoked you. for you. <laughs> and so is this the same thing that you, the same problem that we've had on earlier stuff where you've got different rocks and the pressures from these different rocks holding yeah, this two in yeah, tooth in place exactly you can see the cracks running through this way and the crack running through this way mm -hmm. um so this is has pressure on both sides front and back but luckily nothing on top oh my god that so thing's massive. ideally if we can get underneath of it enough this whole little plate will just pop up but you have to okay. be very delicate with it you don't want to rattle the tooth apart as you're hammering so this is city driving like i said earlier you know <laughs> more like walking Go nice and slow Oh, okay, keep going, keep going. Okay, so now you can see that pressure just pop that section off. That's good. So now I want you to go in at this angle right here, going okay. this way. Imagine there's another tooth right there. Wouldn't that be cool? That'd be amazing. Yeah, that'd be incredible. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. There. There you go. No, not, not Basically just go around the... Yeah, so you don't never want to hammer towards the bone. You want to keep going away from it. So that way you keep the pressure of the hammer away mm -hmm. from it. So oh, kind of go more... Right at that there. angle, right okay. there. Because the bone still might be... Yep, exactly. Yep. There you go. Keep it going nice and gentle. So now when it finally comes loose, you want to avoid, you know, anything like flying or any, anything yeah. harsh. So good just job. nice and gentle. You're doing very good. Good okay. job. Keep it Go going. All right. Here. Got her. Now we want to flip her over and see what we're working with on the other side. Make sure we didn't lose any of that tooth. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> Good job, Isaac. Woo! Yeah. Good job. Oh, yes. the size of that. Look at that. Spin it around on the other side. There you go. Hold on. He is that big. Is epic. Look at that tooth. Holy cow, Isaac. Yes. Rooted and all. That is epic. Let me see the brush. Where's the brush? Good tooth, son. So we have a tendon, which isn't a bone, it's actually a muscle, and I have no idea how that happened. Amy, can you tell me how? Well, I don't know the exact science behind it, but what I can tell you is that there is a difference between fossilization, which is the mineral replacement, or, you know, inorganic material replacement of bones. And then there's also soft tissues, like tendons. And tendons are a soft tissue that ran all throughout the duckbill's vertebrae processes in the top of his back. And uh, they don't fossilize, they ossify. It's a completely different process than fossilization to keep these soft tissues preserved. And out here in the two medicine, we actually see these soft tissues from these tendons preserved quite frequently. We've found probably five or six of them now on this trip so far. Um, so they, they actually, in this rock itself, do very well. Now getting them out in one piece, that's a really tough trick. It's almost impossible. Yeah. But they are very neat still. <laughs> so. How rare is it to find uh, a tendon or you know, in, in other formations, like the Jurassic Morrison, um, you don't see tendons whatsoever. And those were huge sauropod dinosaurs, yeah. so you would think that they would have had a ton of them that would have ossified with, you know, the bones and whatnot. So I'm not exactly too sure why we see them out here versus other formations, but I know I see a lot more of these in the Cretaceous than anywhere else. And why doesn't any, like, why doesn't any other, like, kind of something like a tendon fossilize? Well, there is other pieces kind of like a tendon that we find in the Triassic. They're called scutes. They're the armor plating that you see on a phytosaur or any kind of crocodilian that you see mm -hmm. today. Um, those are soft tissue also. They're a hard cartilage, but they're still technically a soft tissue, not a bone. And those ossify as well and preserve, you know, 220 million years later. So we do see them in some other places, but uh, as far as the tendons go, I've only seen that really in the Cretaceous so far. So they're, 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 they're pretty neat. They're, they're, they're pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> so 
Good job, Isaac. I'm glad you found this. <laughs> Thanks. Well, yeah. Where are we at now in this in, in this channel? So right now, formation? so right now we're in the well, we're in the middle two medicine still, but we're in this kind of the apex of the flood event that happened in the middle two medicine. So this is the layer that we've really wanted to work to this whole entire time. Okay, so this is that real pebbly yep. conjunction of just this big event that brought pebbles and dinosaur yep. bones. Yep, all absolutely. At the same time. Just all sorts of species just ripped them limb from limb, and they deposited everywhere. <laughs> That's nuts that it ripped them limb from the Oh, it's crazy. That's insane. Yeah. So what yeah. do we got going on? So we were down on the layer itself. We're on the top of the layer right now, the really good layer. We have to get all the way, you know, down the 10 inches to the bottom. But just on the top here, we've had some really good luck. So right here we have a vertebrae. This looks like an upper tail vertebrae or a caudal vertebrae. Um, that looks like it's to a ductile dinosaur. It's going to have the neural arch and the neural canal. So that's really good. That, that's where the spinal cord would have ran through. And then this is called the centrum disc. Now we get really lucky with this guy. Nine times out of ten, we can't pop these guys out of the rock. We have to take them home, use air scribe tools, get them out of the rock in the lab. But this one actually has a natural fissure going right around the fossil itself. And uh, we can actually pop this out and get it about 80% exposed. So, okay, so, so that's awesome. Yeah, so this would be a really good one for everyone at home to take a view at and see exactly what these bones look like coming out of the ground. Okay. And see just how dense they really are and how just... These are some of the best bones I've ever come across. So yeah. just how amazing yeah. no, they that's, are. I mean, yeah, th th this is literal hard rock mining for dinosaur fossils. I mean, this this stuff is not, you know, it's not soft. Ninety percent of you know dinosaur hunting out there is is in soft clays. I mean, it's just. But when you get, which is a lot easier to hunt, but when you get into stuff like this, there's a lot of work involved into it. But the preservation of the fossil is just incredible. You know, we've got teeth up here. Yep. We've got more bone down here. So, I mean, there's just, it, it's a really good spot. Yeah, you know, just three feet from this guy over this direction, we have a huge metatarsal toe that looks like it's about 11, 12 inches long. And then just behind Chase here, we found a little juvenile radius bone, which is a lower arm bone. Came out in about three sections, but still an absolutely beautiful bone. So this area is just a lot more lit up with fossils than the top layers themselves. And it's because we have that major flood exactly. coming through. Exactly. So this is just much more high energy water. I mean, this would have been hundreds of thousands of gallons a second going yeah. through, whereas this layer is much more placid, flat water, low energy. Yeah. So this is when the event was starting to settle out. You can still find fossils in this layer, but they're just really few and far between. Yeah. Well, pop this thing out. Let's show us what uh, what it looks like. Awesome. Let's get her going. Right. She's completely free. Nice, big. That is awesome. Beautiful duck bill vert. And so talk about the preservation. What what would you normally see on bones that are found in other Soft areas? clays and whatnot. Yeah. You know, there'd be lots of cracks, lots of fissures. We'd have to go through a lot of glue on this guy to yeah. re-fortify it. The cell structure within the bone would normally be weaker than the skin of the bone, as we call it, quote unquote, or yeah. the outer part of the bone. So you have to soak it in glue to fortify that center. These bones, we don't have to do that at all. I mean, we pop them out, we get them straight to the lab and start prepping them. Yeah, you so. know, and that is one thing that you notice on your on your softer clays and stuff like that is just the amount of glue. I mean, these these bones absorb it like a sponge. It's yeah. insane how much glue these things can eat. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, this bone is just just solid, solid, solid. And so, what bone is this? You said a caudal vertebrae, yeah, a tail vertebrae, an upper tail vertebrae to more than likely the hypacrosaurus, the duckbill dinosaur we have out here. Okay, so. Ducky! Yeah. Lamb four much. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. We found Ducky's bone. That's kind of sad. Kind of. Yeah, Ducky died. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> that is really cool. Yeah, this is a good one. I'm excited. And this has the neural canal here too. So that's the top part of the processes. Yeah. So that'll be where the spinal cord runs through. Okay. So that's, that's a lot better than just getting the centrum disc itself. Okay. You have the whole entire fossil with the processes. Okay. And then this is a rare one that you can app pop out. Most of them you take it back to the lab. Yeah. Most of them you'll just see a side of the bone like this. Okay. And you have to get it all out of the rock from there. Okay. Isaac found a really interesting bone over. I think these yeah. guys would enjoy seeing, Absolutely. Let's seeing that. Let's go. Come Come on, you guys will appreciate this. So Isaac here discovered what's called a vertebrae process. It's the top bones with a neural canal um, where the spinal cord would have ran through. The, the processes encapsulate and hold that spinal cord in place. So this is a neck vertebrae going up to the skull. And you can tell by how flat these processes are and they break off into three pieces. Uh, very rarely do we find the neck vertebrae with the neck vertebrae centrum or the disc itself of the vertebrae. Uh, 
um, they usually float away because they only have this tiny little attachment point right here. So Isaac did a really good job. Um, this is actually out of the top layer of the quarry, so you can see there's not a lot of energy going through this rock. Um, you're starting to see some, but not very much. It's very minimal. So this is actually really cool to see. He did he did a good job. He took his time going through it and actually found the bone in the top layer instead of sending it over the edge of the quarry. So how hard is it to find bone in the top layer? You know, it's you find maybe five percent as five. much as you would in the bottom layer. So good job finding this because most people would miss it. So I'm very proud of you. you is it really um, this. when you find uh, stuff in the top layer? Is it harder to get out of the rock than it is? In Bottom layer. It really varies. You know, the top layer is usually softer, but every now and again you find these little lens spots, is what they're called. And that's one of these lens spots. This is actually just as hard as the bottom layer itself. Um, so that means when we get this bone out of this rock, we have to take a big handheld rock saw and cut this down right across the middle to make this more manageable to get home. Okay. So, and that'll, you know, take it from a 40 pound rock to a 20 pound rock way easier for us to get back to the lab, and then we can get it out with the scribe tools, much more managed. Now, how long does it take to normally like prep a bone or something like this? You know, each bone really varies. Um, you know, uh, something like there you go, this vertebrae right here that we just popped out, you know, he's probably gonna take about, you know, three to four hours or so to get out of the rock and to fully mm -hmm. complete. This one, since it's a little more intricate, you can see how much this bone dips and dies every which direction. Yeah. He's probably gonna take more like five or six hours. But then you get like a big femur that's three and a half feet long. That could take a whole week, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, it could take see. a little bit of time. <laughs> so, but it's very fun, it's very worth it. Because of this bone preservation in this rock, it makes actually the preparation a lot easier. That's so, nice. yeah, yeah. So, good job, Isaac. I'm stoked for you, man. Thank you. Awesome. All right, back to you guys. Holy shit, Isaac, you found an eggshell. That was me. You found an eggshell? Yeah. Wow. An eggshell? That's a big eggshell. Look at that. Oh, shiky. That is awesome. Yeah, that's way too cool. What? Wow. No way. Yeah, that's one of the biggest ones I've ever seen, honestly. Huh. That is huge. That's be damned. Nice, Isaac. Not me. Who found it? Chantel. Oh, nice, Chantel. So Chantel picked this up. This is really cool, and this kind of harpens back to one of our earlier episodes that we did on the eggshell site. Yeah, yeah. And this was a surprising thing to see. To all of us, actually. Yeah, yeah. so we've got a, a, what, a dinosaur eggshell? Yeah, this is a dinosaur eggshell here, like what we find in the Two Medicine, quite often just not in this quarry. Yeah. A lot of the times you find the eggs in the softer clay, not in this hard rock. So this is actually a first for our quarry to come across an eggshell in here. So this is actually pretty darn cool. Especially considering this is one of the biggest egg shards I've actually come across. Yeah, that's so, huge. Yeah, that's actually a good section. So, so why don't you find large eggshell fragments? You know, out in this spot in particular, it's probably because of a mass flood event. It probably just destroyed them. Okay. Um, but as they're eroding from the from the ground in the softer clay beds, they break apart very easily. It does not take long at all for those eggs to just disintegrate into nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, you never know what you might find when out fossil hunting. It's always it always pays to pay attention to the smaller rocks. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. cool. So the um, the eggshell site that you've got, we're kind of high up on the hillside. Yeah. And that site, if I remember, seems a lot lower. Yes, absolutely. So, so how many feet down is it from, let's say, where we're digging here in the hard rock to that softer clay? I, I don't, I don't know for certain, but I want to say the two medicine formation is about 2,400 feet thick. Whoa, so it's okay. a big, thick layer. This, so. this is the point I'm getting at because it's so you've got 2,400 feet in that entire formation. We're digging, finding dinosaur bones up here. 200 feet down, yep. you've got eggshells yep. coming out. Absolutely. So, and there's fossils in all of that. In most of it, yeah, absolutely. You know, the lower two medicine they find in kind of south, um, south on the eastern front of the Rockies here, and that's where they find a lot of myosaur, and they found egg mountain things like yeah. that. And that's a significantly different member of the two medicine, and it's loaded with dinosaurs. So they're kind of all over. So, <laughs> so for how, how thick is the formation? 1,400 feet. I think it's around 2,400, but I have to double check. That. Okay, so yeah. around, around, let's just say a thousand. You've got a thousand feet where you find dinosaur bones the whole way. You know, you could. Um, I think it's probably a little intermittent, but you stand a very good chance. Right. So. That's that's just insane. And see, that's the thing about you know. <laughs> what we're trying to explain to people out there. I mean, these fo you know, fo fossils aren't rare. What is rare is people out hunting. I mean, you've got 
layer after layer after layer after layer going down that it fossils here, fossils here, fossils here, fossils here, fossils here, fossils here. This stuff is out there to find, but there's just not a lot of people out hunting it. Our hope is with these episodes that maybe one of you will come out and will want to discover this history for yourself. That would be awesome because the more eyes we've got out, the more science can learn about this awesome past. So that's awesome, dude. Cool eggshell. Thanks, man. I'm excited. We'll, we'll hopefully we'll find more of this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get back cool. to it. So, Eamon, it is an extreme difficulty doing this kind of hard rock mining. And sometimes there's a lot of peril involved in it. But sometimes the rewards are amazing Absolutely. for what you find. Yep. And this is something along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> this is something well worthwhile. Uh, what we have here is a little theropod femur. Um, there's a very good possibility this is to a small Tyrannosaur. Uh, so that really just made the trip. This is the coolest piece so far that we found. Yeah. So that this is fairly significant. Um, you know, we really need to get it out of the ground safely. So we have to come out in three sections and then get back to the lab and put it back together. But this is really cool. I'm really glad you guys got to be here for this. Project, yeah. So. No, that's awesome. How often do you find bones like this? Not often at all. I'd say probably one out of every 40, 50 bones we find will end up being to a Tyrannosaur yeah. or a Theropod. Yeah. Well, what's fascinating is, is you get the bone, but you also have this beautiful compression yeah, where, the, yeah. where the bone comes out. And that's true for the teeth that you find yep. and other bones that yep. you find as well. Absolutely, yeah. You get this kind of negative spacing of it, the cast, some people call it. Yeah. And those actually help us a lot. You know, say we were to pull this bone out and it came apart with a bunch of different pieces, we can actually use that to help put it back together and see where it fits in. Oh, that's cool. So, kind of like a life cast. Kind of, yeah. Also. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Absolutely. You know, this has been really eye-opening to see how this kind of fossil hunting is done because this is different than any other fossil type of fossil hunting in the country. Yeah, pretty yeah. Much. it's very different than what you see in the movies as far as like little picks and brushes and things like right. that. Um, you know, this is a completely different style of digging where you do have to be a lot more hands-on and use a lot more, or a lot of different tools and kind of more heavy-hitting tools. Yeah, so. and there's not anybody that's doing this kind of hard rock dinosaur hunting that you know of. Not for dinosaurs. Definitely um, nobody that I know. No, uh, uh, you know, you can find a lot of people that deal with hard rock for like trilobites and crinoids mm -hmm. and things like that. But as far as pouring hard sandstone rock, I don't really know of anybody that does the same thing for dinosaur bones themselves. Yeah. So, well, um, this has been a real educational experience for us, and I'm sure for all you guys out there. What's really cool is if you, you know, we've been to this quarry and filmed a handful of times. If you go back maybe three years or four years into our episodes, you can actually see where this quarry started <laughs> way over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> when it was this big. Yeah, yeah, a lot and, smaller. <laughs> yeah, and progressing into the hillside. And what's wild is, is you've got this entire, I guess you could call Mesa. Yeah, almost, know, yeah, yeah. Left that's miles that way, miles that way, that has this layer continuing yeah. Yeah. for miles we're, that way. We're really hoping that this would be our life's work. Episode of Chasing History on YouTube. We are the educational arm of the Smoky Mountain Relic Room, the largest diversity of history for sale in North America. You can check out our website, therelicroom.com. Amen. if people want to get a hold of you, where can they do that? So the best place to get a hold of us is on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, it's Northwest Montana Fossils. If you have any questions or you ever want to see any dinosaur bones, please get a hold of us. We we absolutely love talking about fossils. Yeah, so. no, we, we and we do too. If you want to get a hold of us, you can go to Relic Room uh, on our website, therelicroom.com, or just Google Smoky Mountain Relic Room and you, it's really easy to find where we are. Be sure to like and subscribe to this episode. Go check out Eamon's stuff. He's posting a lot of really cool videos on Instagram and on his Facebook page, Northwest Montana Fossils. Be sure to check that out. Be sure to comment on our episodes. We've also got a podcast, and we've got a great episode of our podcast recorded that we sit down with Eamon for like an hour plus, and we get into this type of fossil hunting. So if you want a more in-depth look at how this type of fossil hunting is, is done and what goes into it, you can go check out our podcast, Chasing History Radio, available wherever you get your podcast. Dude, Eamon, thank you. Thank you, Chase. Oh! Can they find
find you on Twitter. No, you cannot find me on Twitter. Are you sure? I'm, I'm positive. I'm positive you've never seen me on Twitter. So, you don't think that one day you may be on Twitter? No, I don't think so. Are you positive? Pretty positive. Are you, are you sure, Rexy? No, we're not. We will never be on Twitter. Eamon, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Chase. Dude. Appreciate you, man. Remember, Absolutely. guys, history rocks. Woohoo! looks like. You, you can't get it. You can't, you can't get me. Oh no, where is he? Oh, there he is. Genus Envy. <laughs> Come on, Johnny. What do you call this? I don't know what. A flock of these. <laughs> you can unsubscribe now. What do you call, what do you call this? Oh God. What? An upside down one of these. Oh God. Hey, look, there's a cameraman. Good morning, cameraman. <laughs> How are you, cameraman? You wide awake? You sleep good? There's a cameraman. Cameraman! <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, let me do that. That was a voice crack. <laughs> 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 Woohoo! 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 You want to sign autographs. You want to pick your nose. Dare you to throw that. Oh! <laughs> Coming right in the balls. <laughs> hey, doing? Doing good? They look right here in two medicine digging dinosaurs, okay? Well, you gotta watch out for the bears. This is a big bear habitat, okay? Those bears, they come at you like, ah! And then they're like, get you. You see that guy? That's what a bear attack victim looks like. Right there.